It's the grand finale of the Magnus Carlsen Invitational Tournament, but Magnus Carlsen is not in the final. We have Anish Giri playing against Yan Yipom Nishi, and uh, this is their first game. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Let's hit 100k, and do consider supporting us via Patreon or PayPal, links down there. So here we go. This is game one. A Giri with the white pieces, and this is a really entertaining game. I think showing the contrasting styles of the players. Giri, a smooth, positional player. Yanni Pomnishi, very, very creative. Now, he declined to play d6, so we're not going to have a knight off. Um, and Ishigiri has shown he can handle that very well at the moment. Instead, we have e6. And pawn to c3. Giri played it very, very quickly. Obviously anticipated e6. And c3 is a very respectable opening. d5 takes. Now, personally, I like to recapture with a pawn in this position, which will lead back into a kind of... Uh, French Tarash. I think that's a very respectable way for black to play. But queen takes d5 is also good. But you have to be careful when your queen comes out that early. Knight a3. I think if white's going to get any advantage from this line, then this is the way to do it. You're trying to exploit the fact that the queen has come out a little bit early, and you can often throw that knight into b5. Um, a6 has been seen recently to stop the knight coming in, but after a6, of course, the knight will bounce into c4, looking at the b6 square. But there can't be much wrong with playing the knight c6. You bring out a piece. Bishop e3. Supporting the pawn and perhaps threatening to take here. Therefore, pawn takes pawn. And here's the trick. That knight bounces into b5. Be careful with uh, knight c7 check threat with a beautiful family fork. And here, well, this is quite a trendy line. Uh, there was a game in uh, Norway Chess 2020 in the autumn uh, between Aronian and Caruana. And Caruana played queen d7, and that was uh, a fascinating game. Uh, Caruana won a beautiful game. But queen d8 played by Nepo, and, well, I just don't think he's up on the theory, because I think Giri gets a very nice position after this. You can see already white's bishops superbly placed in the middle of the board. And after castles, white does not have to castle kingside, but instead queen c2. And Giri playing very fluently, very quickly, and I think he will have known this position, whereas Nepo, I'm not so sure. So here's the point. Castle's queenside, and this is also already very dangerous, the rook looking at the queen. These bishops look absolutely superb. So queen a5, threatening the pawn here, king b1. And here, well, there, there is actually a game that Wesley so played with white, and he won very quickly um, with, well, an, an attack on the king's side. Um, his opponent played rook d8 there, which wasn't so good. I think Nepo appreciated the danger, and he realised that he's got to attack or counterattack very quickly on the queen's side. You know, there's a huge danger here that white is just going to go g4 and g5 and just blow up the king side. So, uh, Nepo gets his counter in first. He realises he's got to try and bring this bishop into play, but also try to open up the queen side. Bishop e4. Now, that is a very tricky move. Played after two and a half minutes by Giri. Attacking the rook. Well, normally in these positions, you'd go, wow, 
I want to grab a bishop as quickly as possible. Now, this did not happen, but just have a look and see what happens. Queen takes, threatens the rook. If the rook comes to b8, then queen e5 threatens mate in one, threatens the rook. Not too clever. But <laughs> it's funny. Giri thought for two and a half minutes over bishop e4. Nepo thought for precisely three seconds. Bang! Rook b8. It's better than taking. But knight e5. Good move. Threatening knight c6. Bishop b7. The bishop comes into play. Stops knight c6. Bishop takes. Rook takes. And now knight c6 really leads to nothing. The queen just drops back and can, well, cover the bishop. But still a tricky position. Rook d3. That bishop, the, excuse me, the rook might swing to the king side, and the bishop still looking good. In fact, you know, white's piece is quite threatening. Rook c8 covers the c6 square. Rook g3 swings across to the king side. Take care. Well, what would you play here? Black to play. What's up in this position? Well, Nepo was continuing to play very quickly and steamed on with pawn to b4, which is, of course, the move we would like to play. However, in this case, he's overlooked something. Black should play bishop d6 in this position so that the rook covers the pawn here. But after b4, Giri crashed in. Strong move. If king takes, then queen g6 is actually winning. You get through to the king, and you take here, and this is going to be a winning attack for white once rook number two comes over. Uh, so after knight takes, Nepo, well, he was ready. So Giri thought for two minutes over knight takes pawn. Nepo banged out pawn takes pawn instantly. Four minute think from Giri over knight takes pawn check. And now rook takes pawn, good move, rook takes rook, bishop takes rook. And here actually, um, well I say, sorry, I say rook takes pawn is a good move. It is a good move, but there is actually a better move. Probably he should take with the bishop, and this is forced. And now we have a position where white has a rook and two pawns, against a bishop and knight must be better for white considering that you know this this e6 pawn is weak the king is somewhat exposed still a little bit tricky though but as i said rook takes pawn played and here well it's it's a very difficult position black is two pawns down but actually white should be okay oh, excuse me black should be okay here uh, but Nepo played the wrong move. He played queen d5. It's a mistake. He should play queen b5. And the point is, it's very hard for white to bring this knight out. If bishop takes knight, queen check, king here, you give another check with the knight. The problem is that b2 is hanging. White doesn't have time to play knight takes bishop, and, and that's uh, fine for black. The best after queen b5 that white has is to play a4, pushing that queen away. And here white gives up the piece. Well, what's going on in this position? I mean, maybe Nepo just instinctively didn't like this. He thought it was too dangerous. White has three pawns for a piece. But black should be all right there. <clears throat> Instead, <clears throat> after that little digression, queen d5 played. It's a mistake. Now, let's see why. Bishop takes. Queen check. This is the game continuation. In this case, if king e7, we can give a check. And then knight takes bishop. There is no threat to b2. In the previous variation, the queen was actually on b5, and b2 was under fire. But here, it's just winning for white. So after queen c8 check, bishop d8, this is the game continuation. 
Knight g4. The knight has escaped. And white has two extra pawns. Should be a winning position for white. And Giri technically is very good and very solid. So he brings his queen back. Bishop f6. This is the only cloud in the position that there is a little bit of a threat here. But Giri, well, he wasn't born yesterday. He makes sure that that pawn is beautifully protected. Nepo still trying to shake things up. Advances the pawn. Giri, solid, blocks out the pawn. And here, yes, black can take a pawn back. But, well, after queen b5, white is in control. Queen d7 played. That just keeps tabs on that pawn. But Giri... He's not panicking, but he was running a little bit short of time here. So it's still, there are still a few little things to sort out in this position. But at the moment, it looks like Giri is just in control here. He's two pawns up. He's managed to bring his knight to an excellent square, supported by the knight, oh, excuse, excuse me, supported by the pawn. Rook d1, everything is fine. f3. So how is he going to win this position? Perhaps, well, little by little, putting a little bit of pressure on e6, that might be a thought. Nepo played rook d5. Now normally you'd think, well, you're two pawns down, you wouldn't really want to exchange pieces. But this is a very clever try. Now, as I said, maybe a reasonable idea for white would be to put some pressure on that pawn on e6. Rook e1, perhaps moving the queen over to e2. But Geary, running short of time, thought, I'll exchange rooks. Understandable. But this just destabilizes white's position a little bit. First of all, that knight has to move away from this beautiful square. Queen e6, and now we can see what the big idea is. That bishop is coming good. Queen e5, and suddenly there are mate threats down here. Tricky. And don't forget that pawn that might advance at some moment, but really queen e5 is the big threat. Therefore knight g4 hits the bishop, also covers e5. Fine, that bishop has to move away. So it feels as though the danger has been averted, particularly as the bishop is now off that long diagonal. But actually, this is very clever play from Nepo, because you can see the queen and the bishop, they both cover that e3 square here preventing white's knight from returning to the middle of the board. So that knight is a little bit stranded. You can see it actually doesn't have a move. Can't come back into the position. Can't go forward. Those squares are covered as well. So all those squares off limits. So the knight has been just a little bit sidelined. And that makes life difficult for Geary. You know, how exactly does white make progress here? Well, he decided that he needed to bring that knight back into the middle and played pawn to f4. Now the computer wants white to shuffle the king in the middle, but that's a difficult decision to make when you're short of time. So we have this scenario where Nepo is moving quickly, a, a bit raggedly. He's made several mistakes in this game, but he has managed to at least... Um, produce a position where there is some doubt now. There is some doubt because that knight can't rejoin the rest of the forces. Giri tried f4. Queen e1, the queen moving in. That's, this is dangerous. And now, well, this is probably the best way to play for white. Giving up that pawn um, and well, at least bringing the queen to a decent position. But that it's still very tricky now. It's only one pawn. But after queen e1, 
Well, Geary, I think, very understandably thought, I'm going to grab a pawn. But after queen c3, remarkably, this is enough for a draw. So the knight is still offside. The queen is now somewhat offside. There's a threat just to check, and that's at least a draw by perpetual. There's also this move to contend with. And in this position, Geary could see nothing better than to give a, a draw, force a draw, by perpetual check. In fact, there, there really is nothing better. So, for example, if knight e5, let's just have a quick look at this, this actually loses after this, and bishop d4 check, it's, it's uh, mate. Next move. So, after queen a8, the queen just came back, just checking the king, and that was a draw. As I said, fascinating struggle between two different styles. Geary with a, with a strong opening, getting the advantage, two-pawn advantage, looked as though he had the perfect position with the knight on c4, but then short of time, he blew it, and suddenly that knight was out of position on g4, and Nepo had enough to draw the game. Very interesting. So this was game one. I'll report back and let you know what happened in the rest of the set. Thanks for watching.